What's up fellow artists? I'm Dave Rooks. I'm the artist of this channel and today's tutorial is all about drawing an owl in colored pencil. The background you'll see is done in Derwent ink tents. I tried to do something a little bit different. The owl was done in polychromos and prismacolor colored pencil and I used uh, odorless mineral spirits and brush and pencil touch up texture and titanium white for all the highlights bring out some contrast and then went over that with a little tinting so sit back and uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial video and learn something today I started off by putting tape around the, the rectangle portion that I want to do the background and I already did a little wash of yellow now with the ink tents I'm going over with some green and you'll see I've put you know several layers of uh, darker green just to give the uh, lose enough faded background there with the ink tents blow drying it off a little bit adding some more color Yeah, just getting a little darker. Now I started working on the eye. As you can see a little block in of black and some yellow. I like to do the dark part first just to get a, an idea of the value range. Now as you can see in the final picture, this eye isn't just going to be one solid color. It's going to be multiple layers of yellows some oranges some reds you can't just uh go with you know what you think oh it's just orange you need to do multiple colors to get that depth in there same with the black of the eye i didn't just put black down i added some blue some red just to give it some depth you don't want to use straight black Again, as you can see, the eye is going to be multiple colors, using some browns just for the uh, shadow there underneath the eye, blending out with some uh, odorless mineral spirit, odorless mineral spirits. Continue doing some shadow work there. You got to make sure that shadow underneath the eye uh, follows the contour just to. Give the eye some depth. Again, various colors of yellows, oranges. Even some shades of uh, like red, maroon there. Just working on some fine detail, getting that in there. Again, just going back and forth, doing my lights and my darks. Building up, building up, building up. Doing some work on the outside now. Just getting some lines in there. Kind of hear my bird in the background there. Actually, two birds. Just establishing some color outside of the eye there, just around it. We'll be bouncing back and forth between the eye and the outside, probably. I'm just doing this voiceover on the fly, so that's why I said probably. A little shift in the screen there. And back to the eye. As you can see, just some dark colors of red, reddish brown there. Takes a bunch of different colors, what you might not expect or, or you know, actually see. It'll take various shades of other colors just to build up that contrast of the eye to, to give it an illusion of roundness and, and the, uh, the color range that's actually in the picture. You know, you just don't see yellow and orange 
there's various colors. I think I probably used 10 different colors for the eyes, if I had to guess. Right here, I'm just kind of working on the underside, the, I guess, eyelid of the, the owl there. Again, that's going to be various colors of yellows, or browns, using some uh, the mineral sprints there to blend out. Now I'm starting on the upper portion of the eye and going back and forth. Just laying up some light colors there. It's a light, not a really light tannish color. And going over with some browns again. Don't know why I went country right there, but I did. You gotta make sure your uh, pencils are nice and sharp because you want to get into the tooth of the the paper. You don't want the color to sit just on top of the ridges. Get some more browns right there. And I finally decided to put a piece of tracing paper underneath to protect the uh, drawing. Probably should have done that in the beginning, but better late than never, right? And I got a text. I laid some of that light tan down. You can't really see it in the uh, in the video, but trust me, it's there. Again, with some of the mineral spirits, flatten that color it. I kind of bounce around. Don't really work on one part of the drawing for too long. Some of that's because I'm waiting for the uh, mineral spirits to dry, also. But as you can see, you know, starting on the eye and just building up right around it, you can start seeing the uh, the depth and the definition of the eye come together, and especially once I. Uh, start getting all the other feathers around it, you'll see uh, the shape really take place. I think the brush I'm using there is just a cheap, I think size 2 uh, flat brush. I got it at a set probably at Hobby Lobby or Something like that. And we're starting to do some blacks. See, as you can see, some of that blue. I think that's like a dark navy blue going over the black there. Just to uh, give the black a little more definition. You don't want that flat black sitting on there. Again, with uh, the color you cannot see. We'll call it the John Cena of colors. Some of you may get that reference. Starting to work on the uh, one of the ears. It's just like decorative feathers. Bird's ears aren't like that. There we go. Some yellows, some tans. I'm laying down those light colors first, but I did do some of the dark just to, to get that definition in there and uh, just uh, define the lines where I want to put the uh, other colors around it. 
lot of drawing is uh, getting your values correct. You don't want to go with uh, just a flat rendition. You want, you know, really dark darks and uh, the correct uh, amount of lights where you need it. That's what gives things shape and form and contrast. If everything's the same value, everything just looks flat. You know, jumped ahead a little bit, blocked in some of the uh, the head there. As you can see, some lights and some uh, light browns, and uh, just putting over the dark areas now, getting the definition in there. Like I said before, I'll go over it with some uh, mineral odorless mineral spirits when I get some more layers in there. So you'll see it'll get it'll start to look flat, but then you got to build that back up with a bunch of more layers. Again, keep that pencil nice and sharp. There we go. Now you can see the the odorless mineral spirits. See how the the color kind of got dull. Some of that goes away, but once it dries, then you start uh, layering more color over top, and then you know get rid of the dullness. That's just to uh, push that color into the tooth of the paper there. Again, see going over that with that purplish blue that way to get rid of that flat black and I'll hit it a, a few times with the mineral spirits just blend it in areas like this you know you can work on the dark first just to get your reference of where your uh, light colors are going to be And kind of working off the paper. Oh, wasn't too long. Now I'm back. Here we're getting some of the, the browns laid in there. And if you look at the look at the head and uh, look at the where the feathers are going, you gotta look at your reference photo and follow the way those uh, lines of the feathers go. You just don't want to just arbitrarily you know, lay down some colors or just shade it in that, you know, it's not like a coloring book. You've got to pay attention to where those feathers are if you're doing a bird. And different portions of the the bird, the feathers are going to go different ways. And you, as you can see there, you know, there is some cross hatching in this particular owl. Some of those light feathers out there on the edge around the uh the head and into the background there and going back to working around the eye and the white there i must not have uh filmed it or cut it out you can see the white laying over top that's the um brush and pencil titanium white and the touch up texture I painted that over top just to get those light spots in it's pretty easy with that product you don't have to worry about keeping the whites white and drawing around it you can just paint that on top and it's archival and it'll it's made for color pencil I'll have a link to the website in the my description of where you can get that Starting off on the uh, upper portion there, right above the uh, the beak of the bird, the owl. I know when I am uh, doing colored pencils, I seem to break convention a lot, and. You know, a lot of artists will just go straight from light to dark and just build things up. With me, you know, a lot of times I'll I'll do the darks just to uh, define my lines, and then I can work my lights in between them. 
especially with the mineral spirits. I'm not too concerned. I can kind of knock it down and, and build up my layer slowly. Now, if you were, you know, if you were burnishing or not blending with uh, the mineral spirits, then you'd uh, want to work from light to dark because it's a different type to eat. Drawing in some of those really uh, fine black hairs there. And if you want to see the reference photo, I got it off of uh, Pixabay, so it's on there, free to use. There, now you can see me painting in some of the whites with the uh, titanium white. Just using a fine, using a fine uh, liner brush there, like a number two liner brush, again from Hobby Lobby. It's just a great way to get in those uh, white details, and you can. Once it's completely dry after about, uh, depending on how thick the mixture is, five to ten minutes, you can color over it. You can, you can uh, knock it down, you know, with a little tin of uh, color if you don't like the straight white. And as you can see, I'm using the reddish brown there. This particular owl, it had many, many colors of yellows, tans, browns, reds, oranges. And so to bring those out, you're going to want to, you know, layer all those colors. But being as an artist, it's up to you to, uh, to bring out the contrast of that. And, you know, you might want to add a little more red just to, just to punch things up a little bit. Because in nature, sometimes, you know, the, the colors you see aren't exactly the most exciting. In this case, the, you know, the owl was very colorful already. So you can see he's just throwing in some highlights there. You can see the highlight on, in the eye did that with the, with the titanium white also. With that, you know, you want to add it. I added a curve. Better defines the the shape of the eye because obviously an eye is not flat and boom see just like that I got all that done behind the eye that wasn't any editing magic at all I skipped most of that because it's uh, it's basically the same as uh, doing the head, you know, a bunch of layers of the yellow, orange, red, blue, the black, blue, red on top of the black, the mineral spirits. A lot of times once you get so far into a an animal or any project, you know, it, it's just a bunch of rinse and repeat until you uh, you finish it up. There are some subtle differences, though. Like the forehead and then the behind the ears and the uh, the eye there where I'm working at. You know, there was a lot of cross hatching, so it, it can be a little different. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all technique. And then the biggest thing is you want to remember how you layered the color. That way, when you go from area to area, it looks consistent. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to start layering one area with dark brown, orange, red, and then yellow, and then do the other area with yellow, red, dark brown, you know. While it can look pretty similar, you'll see a little bit of a difference. So 
you want to stay consistent in that matter. And again, the magic of editing. I skipped the blocking in portion. But as you can see, this area here, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fine lines and some cross hatching. The feathers were going all over, all over the place here. And again, once I get all that done, I'll I'll go over it with the uh, titanium white to bring out my highlights and all those white feathers. All right, here I'm starting on the, uh, I guess you would say the cheek. So you'll notice that the feathers are pretty long here. Again, it's just like everything else, just laying down some base color and uh, building up. But here especially, I have to watch for the direction of the feathers. And there is a lot of cross hatching as the, the feathers coming off and they're pretty long, so they... Uh, overlap each other creating some really interesting texture here and you'll see some of the strokes are pretty long but you got to make sure you know that the, the shape isn't just a straight line you'll notice all these curves of the feathers and curving up curving down you got to follow that if you want to make it look realistic And you'll see it you know, moving along with the beak. You know, I got to get those dark areas up into those uh, feathers of the cheek because the beak doesn't just stop there. It goes further up, so you got to get that into the background for the overlap. And, of course, the beak isn't just black. The bird's beaks will have, you know, different cracks, you know, different texture. It's not just flat. So you got to convey that. You'll see, you know, adding some light in there. Then I'll go over it with the... Uh, Mineral spirits here to flatten it down, and it's just a slow, gradual buildup of uh, all the colors. Skipping head a little bit, as you can see, I uh, finished the cheek there. You can you use the the titanium white to go over that. If you notice over the beak, uh, all the wisps from the white really add a lot of dimension, especially against that the black uh, of the beak. I would say you know that in the eye, that's probably the strongest uh, difference in values of this whole piece. It draws your attention to that center mass of the owl. Here, starting on the body. It's basically the same thing. Just putting in the blast, getting that road map, and then just going over with the various colors again. Same color scheme. You want to layer in the same way. That way uh, all the feathers look the same. But the feathers of the body are pretty different. They were... They were pretty long, they were pretty flat. The edges, when they overlapped each other, created that cross hatching again. So you gotta notice that, uh, notice that in your piece. You can't just say, oh, you know, the feathers in the, the forehead, I'm just gonna use that same technique all over the body. It doesn't work. So I would say, probably in this owl picture, there was probably Four different variations of the feathers and the techniques I had to use to get this done. One being the forehead, the back of the head, um, the body, the cheeks, 
in that uh the short area around the eyes i don't know if that would be like the crown or or whatever those were some uh pretty short feathers but they had a lot of cross hatching also Here I skipped ahead since a lot of it was uh, the same. This is towards the end of the the drawing, as you can see. Uh, all the the variation of texture in this part of it. You can see the longer feathers. Now I'm just doing the titanium white. Bring out my values. I can go over that with uh, other colors just to give it a little tint. That way it's not stark white. as you can see a lot of it's coming together and even on the body the the portion on the bottom it's even different than the uh the neck portion now here just darkening up some uh some of the blacks getting some of the the values value range a little darker get that contrast going a little bit better especially on the eye especially on the beak i would say in this piece that so the two main uh, focal points, it's the eye and the beak. I kind of tried to design it with like that, with that, uh, with that diagonal line following the uh, the bleed off of the background there, kind of the left to right diagonal. You can hear uh, one of the birds in the background going crazy. He's pretty happy. Now we're getting towards the end. Getting some last minute finishing up. But there you go, that's it. That's the uh, final image of the owl and colored pencil.